As you all know, I love a good shell challenge every once in a blue moon, but whenever I get to build something that's not something I have to build my own, it's a great time. And so today I'm attempting to do Little Simsy's Dino Shell Challenge that actually did not make me cry this time, which is very surprising. Now, when I was building this house on stream a couple of weeks ago, I was actually trying to figure out what was the best possible way to make this house look good. And so I decided to actually put this into Brychester, which is a world that I normally do not not build in or nor go to because it's the university world that we got with Discover University. And when it first came out, I was still in university. And I kind of dreaded just going there every time because it was stressful. I didn't understand it. And it was just a lot of work. And so I went to challenge myself this year to build in that world more and kind of fill it up with my own little builds that I do. And I actually have a story in mind for this build for one Pacific Sim that lived here 40 years ago. And I will tell you that story in a couple of minutes, of course, in this video. But I have to say when trying to figure out the idea behind everything, I was struggling with like just the general, I don't know, the concept, like the, the layout of the exterior, even the interior. Because what's different about the shell is there's a basement and I don't like basements whatsoever because I find them very traumatizing and struggling because depending on how big they are, is how long or how much I'm going to struggle with like figuring out what I want to do. And I decided to go with more of like a reading room where your Sims can actually like study, do their book club, watch some TV, eat some popcorn. But that will be later in the video you will see, of course. But I would love to know down in the comments below, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling good? Because today is a Friday and I find Fridays one of the best things and one of the best days in my entire life because it's like the weekend and I just feel like just juvenated and refreshed overall so it just feels good and I find that my my my, my videos for me at least I find them very relaxing for me because they feel like a podcast at least at least for me they do and I have a podcast I haven't uploaded in like a year for my podcast and I've been like trying to figure out the best possible way to bring it back in a good medium so I have a podcast, if y'all didn't know, it's called Hello Spring. There's like 20 different episodes you can listen to. I'll link it down below in the description if you want to listen to the episodes, of course. But nevertheless, I went full ham on the layout or on like the exterior because you all know this. I love plants. I, I'm obsessed with plants. I can't stop adding them. I always quote Bob Ross. He says, it's no mistakes, only happy accidents. But also he says, paint happy trees. And so you know what I do? I paint happy trees, but I also plant them in Sims. And um, I just can't stop. So Bob Ross, may you rest in peace. I will follow you with your quotes every single day because landscaping is key. Landscaping just makes the build look more lively and more exciting to look at. So I wanted to really make this historical university housing dorm really fitting the times of what I wanted because for the story for this build actually is that there were sims who used to live here 40 years ago now this house was already here way before they came here but 40 years ago there was like at least three different sims who lived here Stacy, Janet, and Carly and let's just say those three sims are are um they're very lovely people. They're still around. They're still alive. And not only did they all graduate, but Janet, Janet came back after 40 years later wanting to get another degree. But the one thing that they didn't really tell anyone is something around the summertime, basically saying, I know what you did last summer and I still know what you did. I still know what you did. Like those movies are like kind of crazy and weird. I'm still watching them on Netflix. They're kind of weird anyway someone died at this at this lovely university housing and um stacy didn't make it they say that she graduated but in reality she didn't make it so stacy died in this lovely university housing about 40 years ago they just said that she graduated but in reality she died downstairs in the basement and it was through a murphy bed death and we all know the murphy beds from tiny living are very deadly no matter what we say no matter what we do they are deadly they look very great they have like four different versions i think yeah four different versions of the murphy bed but one of them is actually very um not so great and stacy 
went downstairs to go sleep after studying after a long exam. They were basically in their second, you know, year of university. And um, let's just say one thing led to another. The Murphy bed just snapped and she was trying to take it down. She died. And then they just covered it up. Janet and, and Carly covered up Stacy's death and pretend like nothing ever happened and went about their semester, went about their whole entire school year without saying a word. They just said, oh, they were like, where's Stacy? What happened to Stacy? Is she doing all right? Is she feeling better? And they're all like, yeah, 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 yeah. She's totally fine. She's totally fine. But in retrospect, they were just saying, yeah, she's totally fine. She wasn't feeling too well. She wanted to actually take a break from university to leave for a hot minute and come back eventually one of these days. <laughs> come back a couple of these days. It ended up being like 40 years. But basically what happened was that uh, they were saying that Stacy went away, dropped out of university and went to go live with her grandparents because her parents were no longer speaking to her at all because where she went to university because her parents went to Foxbury. She went to Brychester. Bi this whole big ordeal of the family legacy always going to Foxbury. Crazy. I know it's weird. So basically they, they disowned her and she went to go with her, with her grandparents, they said. And, you know, you know, they were like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool. It's great. That's great. We all believe you. Hopefully she feels better and hopefully she returns, you know, few summers pass three, four, 10, 40 summers pass, um, more technically 38 summers pass. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that, uh, Janet was actually coming back to university to get another degree 38 years later, basically. 38 years later, Janet came back and um, Carly was actually also came back and is actually the dean or like one of the professors at this university. And, you know, your past leads, you know, catches up to you after so long of period of time. And, you know, Janet... And Carly basically come back with their old university, their old lives, and want to re not rehash things, but more like never speak of ever, ever again. And Janet actually came back to this specific university dorm. She's in her second year, like she was 38 or 40 years ago, basically. She came back 38 years, you know, two years later, you know, you're in your second year. Either way, you, you know the idea. Basically, Janet came back 38 years later, now in her second, you know, year, 40 years. And she lives in the same room where her and Carly stayed in as roommates, where is uh, Janet, Jan well, yeah, Janet and Carly, no, Janet and Stacy. Janet and Stacy lived in the same room Carly had her own room with some other random weirdo. I don't know who that was. They moved out after like a, a semester, but it's kind of, it's kind of crazy to think about that Janet stayed is back in the same room 40, 38 years later where the incident happened and she pretended nothing ever happened because everything was renovated. Everything was changed and it was just completely different and didn't really see anything different. And Janet actually brought her cat with her and you're not supposed to have cats in university. I don't think. With this pack, I'm not sure if that's the thing. I don't know. Either way, they have a cat. Jana has a cat. And the the room, the room that she stays in is actually her entire room by herself with an extra bed for a cat because there was no room for a pet bed whatsoever. And I guess what, what makes it more fun is that there's her, her cat, and two other random, you know, people in this lovely dorm that she stays in with her cat. And now this basement, it was renovated because of the controversy and the drama and the weird, mysteriously Murphy bed death from, from uh, Stacy. Um, is that basically Janet and Carly? Yeah, I always get the names, names mixed up. Basically, Janet and Carly, they um, personally came back to this like place about 20 years into the future to renovate it, to make it look better. Like before, you know, the whole student, you know, new student orientation, freshman orientation, whatever it's called. They came back, took everything out, completely hired the team of who knows what from StrangerVille, 
and completely demolished the entire basement, made it brand spanking new, added new floors, took away the marking of where Stacy died and did it completely done. And it's kind of funny how when you, when you think about how people cover up things in The Sims. And I personally like listening to uh, crime-related podcasts and murder podcasts. I don't know why. I just do. They, I find them very fascinating and interesting to listen to. Um, and I'm currently listening to like the lore podcast, lore podcast by Aaron Mankey on Spotify. And it's really good. I love it. And, um, I don't know. I just think those are like fun to listen to and like, just, you know, do a deep dive or whatever. But nevertheless, like I said, Stacy died here. Carly and Janet came back after a couple of years, renovated the basement, made it brand new, new for new students over the years, added a popcorn machine, added in, you know, a TV into here, made it very stylish, very modern, and kind of kept it up with the times. And over the years, they, you know, clean, change things around so they don't find stuff, make sure they literally took out every evidence that does not lead to them. Because the twist is, is that um, the Murphy bed was a remote control and as you all know, Murphy beds are very deadly. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, Carly and Janet, they, um, they had a grudge against Stacy because not only was Stacy dating, secretly dating Janet's boyfriend, Stacy was also secretly dating Carly's girlfriend. And, you know, those relationships didn't end so well for either of them, basically, but at the time they weren't, they didn't know a single thing. It was like kind of behind their backs. But, you know, one news reporter at the local school, the little eavesdropper that people are in, in university, one found out, told Janet, and also told Carly about what was happening. You know, they were the best of friends since the sandbox. And things just didn't go their way. And it's just like, mm, it's time to cause up some drama. And there's always like that one instant in, incident late at night it's like 3 a.m. and you're all of a sudden, you hear a scream. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? It's crazy. But um, basically, um, Janet killed Stacy. And Janet, like I said, came back here 38 years later to get another degree in criminal justice. Um, so yeah, she wants to be a lawyer because I find that one of these days she's gonna get caught and it's not gonna end very well for her whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, she came here first, like 38, 40 years later or 40, 40 years ago for an arts degree. Cause she loved art and was a very artistic and whatever and loved soccer. And, you know, when the incident happened, she was like, maybe I should come back and get another degree. Cause Carly kind of basically talked her into getting some type of representation of like, you know, lower, lower up or whatever. But, you know, Jane didn't have money. She was broke. She didn't have nothing. So she was like, I'll just go back to school, get a degree in, you know, you know, law and be my own lawyer and defend myself. And you know, she did. Um, she's still in here, still struggling, but still doing great. But will the instant, will, will the problem still occur? And will the two freshmen who stay here find out what's happening? Because currently right now I'm actually making two of the, um, you know, freshman, sophomore, whatever, um, rooms for this, for this build. And the next one you'll see is Janet's, you know, bedroom. And, but this is actually where Carly stayed in like 40 years ago with some other random weirdo who like moved out after like a semester or two. And Carly just had her own little bedroom by herself after, you know, second year. So it was really great for her. She loved it. Um, but I find it, it's kind of hilarious that Janet literally came back to the same house 38 years later, in the same room, in the same situation, in the same environment, but completely different people. But we just don't know if they'll ever come across paths. And the fact that there's a grave on there in this lot is quite disturbing. A lot of people don't know that um, these like people who just come here, they always find out certain things, but they just don't know. They find it, it's maybe like a structure or some type of prop or just whatever random ghost story they want to tell. Because legend tells, legend has been told, 
that it was like a secret, you know, crazy thing that happened in the late 1860s or whatever, like years and years ago, nothing related to like, you know, Jane or Carly or, or Stacy or whatever, but people think. So they, they, they think it's from like the old 1800s time from that gravestone and they just kept it there for the sake of history and not ruining, you know, the, the, the essence, the ambiance, the, the aura of the spirit or whatever. And I find it very hilarious that no one knows, but we'll have to, you know, figure that out at some point. So I just think that's kind of funny that they're back in the same situation, the same area, in the same university. And what's crazy is that most of the students who lived here in like Brychester, not Foxbury, like 40 years ago, some of their kids stay here and they still haven't come across paths. So we'll have to see how that goes. And eventually down the line, It'll happen. I don't know, but we'll have to see. But this will be in my save file. So whenever my save file ever comes out, who knows when, when I get to Brychester, actually, you'll have Janet, Stacy, and Carly, but uh, Stacy will be dead, of course, and you will know why if you watch this video. You'll, you'll just know the whole gist, the whole tea, the whole shebang, shebang, and you'll get the tea, the lowdown, all that jazz. And it's going to be worth it in the end, I find. But... Ultimately, I had so much fun actually building, not building the ha like the actual house, but being able to like decorate a house for a university student or a university students, like multiple, plural, and tell a story because I used to tell stories in all of my builds I've ever done on YouTube. I will always build and tell about the story about that build. And this feels good. So... Like I said, I am. I attempted Little Simsy Shell Challenge and didn't cry because I had actual fun with it and really tried to make it look good and do something different that I haven't done before in quite some time. But ultimately, at the end of the day, a shell challenge is a challenge within itself, but it's worth it. And I always say, give it a go because you never know unless you actually try. So if you ever want to do a shell challenge, I recommend mine, Simsies, whoever who does a shell challenge, do them because you never know what to expect until you actually do it. And you might just have fun. But either way, let's go ahead and actually hop into the real time tour of this video. So when I was doing Little Simsy Shell Challenge, I was having way too much fun doing this just because it was different, it was easy, and I kind of knew what I really wanted because I said it in Brychester, and it's a world that I usually don't go to or build in, and I wanted to change that. So I made it a university housing, you know, building. Now this was actually her previous shell, her dino shell before her new one, the mistakes shell. And I'm just now doing the video, but I wanted to show you what I have done with her shell challenge, basically. So it was like the original shell is right here, and then I added in a gazebo. But here's the thing. Someone died from a Murphy dead, Murphy bed death, and I was like, oh, chaos. I love that. So I went ahead and added a random debug gravestone here for context. And it just seemed fitting. But of course, since it's been here for like more than 40 years, but 40 years ago, someone died, I wanted to add in a few touches of the landscaping and also a garden box here for different things like, you know, some, you know, basils, you know, some strawberries, even some tomatoes and also potatoes over here for some growing needs and fireflies. And I just think like the exterior is like one of those things that you get to do whatever you want with because it's the outside and you're not really restricted on space in a sense. So it's kind of like free form in my opinion. Now this shell had a basement and I don't really do basements that much just because I never know what to do. And this is actually where the Murphy bed was here and that's where someone died. So I felt like, you know, to avoid controversy and drama and lawsuits of the university, they went ahead and actually renovated the bath, the, the basement into more of a reading room, you know, relaxing room, study club, whatever they want to do with like some entertainment of a TV and some popcorn machine to make the problem go away. So I definitely wanted to make it very you know new luxurious nice and modern for today's society whether you know the other ones like the upstairs is more historical I find because it's very empty and university students don't really need much and they don't require much 
and they can't cook. So the kitchen is very teeny tiny small along with like their bathrooms and the hallway and like this small section right here. But the main event is usually outdoors. I want them to leave their house to see other people rather than on the inside. But the one thing that I really love about this kitchen though is that I made a small little open space counter and the way to achieve it is that you all you gotta do is find like a dishwasher and then hit your left bracket key to size it down to the smallest thing that it can be. Hide it with like a trash can or like some other knickknacks and paddy wax. And then you basically have achieved an open, you know, under counter counter space, which I think is really, really cool. And I've never done it before, but I've seen people do it. And I'm like, now is my time to do it. So if you want to try it, do it. It's really fun. I think it's really nice. But since university students don't really can't cook and they are not allowed to have a stove whatsoever, I felt, you know, they just need a fridge, microwave, and a dishwasher, and they're good to go. But I did add in two bathrooms into this house, so like one downstairs and then one, of course, upstairs on the second floor where they all sleep. Now, basically, I don't think they're allowed to have pets in the university housing at all, but I went ahead and added in a cat tree and some cat toys, but I don't believe I added in a cat bed whatsoever, but they can sleep on the bed, so I don't really care about that, so I left that in. And what's so interesting about this whole, like, cat situation is that the Sim, who actually lived here 40 years ago for, like, you know, studying marketing or a doctor degree, they live in this room, and basically this entire room is theirs, but since you need four bedrooms in a university housing setting, I added added in this bed for the sake of their cat and whoever wants to come here probably will stay and sleep in this bedroom. But since the Sim who lives right here, they came back 40 years later and they're really, really like they're in their eldership and they're coming back for like some random small degree that they just want to achieve because they want to be an overachiever and get every single degree. But they also love cats. So they brought their cat with them and they have them sleep on this bed right here along with, you know, all their cat related posters like this cat calendar, some cat posters, of course, a dog one for their previous pet they had ages ago when they were kids. But then the hallway situation is relatively small very skinty and I just didn't know what to do because hallways are not my strongest suits but since we needed four beds I felt like this room right here in particular was made for you know freshmen or people who are living off campus to come live on campus as they learned the experience so I gave them this bedroom with all their shoes and all their knickknacks one's a painter major and one's more like a music type of comedy major and of course they add in their journals and their school projects from the elementary school days and I just think this just it's very fitting now I find that since I can't add extra walls to a shell challenge like more specific Kayla shell challenge I wanted to add it in the attic but I wasn't going to do it so I felt like these two dormers right here were like the previous uh style of the original building so they just kind of kept these dormers here for the sake of you know historical reasons and realism of not changing the history of the build but still keeping it in line if you know what I mean but I don't know. I just think that this is like one of my favorite builds I've done that was a shell challenge, but something that I was able to do and create something that was different. You know what I mean? I just think it was really fun. But if you want to download this shell and use it for yourself, it is on my gallery page. My origin D is Spring Sim. So if you want to see it, it is up there. But either way, as always, I do hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments below as always of what you thought, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.